Hello, good morning my creative friends. Welcome to Painting in Your PJs live with Minette and a drive-by by my kitty Diego. And uh, I hope you're having a good day. I got my nice warm cup of coffee here. Super excited to be gathering with everyone and getting my desk set up because at the last minute I changed my mind about what I wanted to do this morning so I had to gather all of my supplies so bear with me for just a minute as we get all of this going and all of the tech working in all of the places and I swear if I put a piece of paper down on my big art table Georgia has to sit on it and she loves eating plastic which I have no idea why she feels the need to shred plastic. Good morning, good morning. Happy Leap Day. So exciting to have an extra day. It doesn't feel like an extra day. <laughs> Carol, welcome. Good morning. I haven't been up that uh, long this morning either. I got to go rescue. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, Jen. I got to go rescue my uh, some plastic from my cat before she swallows it. So bear with me for just a second. And don't laugh when you see my leggings that I have on. All right. She's not very smart sometimes and she tends to not just shred the plastic but then swallow it, which plastic cannot be good for anybody's digestive system. All right, hello. I know it's a crazy morning around here. Bonnie, hello. Susan, hello. So happy to see everybody. And uh, welcome. I'm Dr. Minette. This is Painting in Your PJs Live with Minette where we use art as a creative process for self-discovery self and mindful meditation. And we're going to kind of wrap all of that in together a little bit this morning. And at the very beginning of the month, hi Judy, we created some mixed media affirmation cards. And I had the thought on Tuesday that I wanted to play with watercolor today. And uh, Marion, I don't know that you're, she's here yet, is like, yes, watercolor, please. And then we didn't revisit the affirmation deck. So today I want to come back to our beautiful list of 28 self-love affirmations and create some abstract watercolor cards with some affirmations. And this feels kind of like combining some mindful abstract watercolor play with some affirmations and, and sort of not really illustrating the words per se, but maybe thinking about color and movement of the brush and how that can contribute to capturing feeling on the page in a way that is more abstract and open-ended. So that's kind of my thought for the day. We're going to play and see how it goes. So I'm going to go ahead and change my camera here as George is trying to steal absolutely everything off the art table over there. So I've got my coffee, that's what's most important. I have a big old pan of watercolors. This was actually my mom's and uh, she gave it to me a couple of years ago and I've been having fun playing with it and I've refilled some of the colors. I have a spray bottle because the first thing I'm gonna do is come in here and activate all of these colors. I'm seeing I can use some more yellow in here, but I've got a little bit of everything. And I have some a little bit of dots here left over from another project. So these actually, let's see if that'll just pop out of there. It's funny, the blues don't stick and pop out, but that yellow is going to, I'm going to get that yellow going activated there. The thing about playing, good morning, good morning. Um, the thing about playing with watercolor is it's a water-based supply and the more water you use, the more abstract it's going to be and the less control you have over the, the pigment, the less watercolor then the more vibrant the color will be as well as uh, the, a little bit more control that you'll have over the end product, right? So we're going to play with some of all of that this morning. And I love simply playing with watercolor. 
and I grabbed a couple of brushes. I don't normally use big flat brushes like this for watercolor. All right, can you hear me now? Did I turn myself off? Okay, mic, mic, mic. Okay, now you can hear me. All right, so I think I leaned against the on off button on my microphone, apologies for, for that. Okay, great, thank you everybody. All right, good now. Beautiful. All right, so a variety of brushes take good care of your watercolor brushes. So I've got some watercolor paper here that I had lying around. It was a eight by 10 and uh, I just cut them in half. So they're five by eight. I thought about playing smaller, but when I'm playing in this kind of meditative way with watercolor, I wanted to have a little more room to be expressive. I want room to be able to write the affirmation on here. And I wanted something that was going to be pretty that I might just take one of these and prop it up on an altar or leave it out on my desk to remind me that I am deserving of my own love and attention. And there are so many great affirmations in our list of affirmations this month. And the first one on the list is, I am deserving and of love and respect just as I am. I am deserving of love and respect just as I am. And so when I think about the energy of that or think into kind of the color of that, and I think I'm going to start with wet on dry. So I love playing with watercolor wet on wet and we'll do both techniques, but I want to start with wet on dry. And I'm going to get a lot of paint on my brush here. And I just intuitively was very drawn to this magenta. So I've really loaded up my brush. It's really wet. And I'm going to hold my brush way at the end very loosely. And I'm just going to come in and swirl that brush. And look at the lines and the marks that creates. And watercolor doesn't need to be magic. It doesn't need to be precise. There are pe people who do beautiful things with watercolor. But how I learned to really love watercolor was to really allow myself to play. So this is a size 12 round on my creative wish list is like an even bigger watercolor mop brush like they use for a lot of the uh, Japanese calligraphy and mark making. So I am deserving and love of respect just as I am in kind of all of my messy glory. And I'm looking at this going, I don't know why, but it definitely needs a pop of bright yellow on here. So I'm not gonna worry about that paint being wet. And I'm gonna do the same thing again and I'm really gonna load up my brush here with some yellow paint. And look at that fun accidental drop and I'm like okay that was kind of cool so what if I let that happen again or let that be my starting point and again I'm not controlling what the brush is doing and what's happening is that we're getting a watercolor dagger brush. All right. Thank you, Carol. I will have to look that up. Watercolor is not my primary medium, so I don't know nearly as much about it. But what I love here 
is the flow and the patterns in here that make me think of fire and passion, but also of growth. And I feel like I need one little just dot of green right in the center. And I think this sort of pretty olive green. And I'm just going to come in where that's really wet and put a little green in there. And then I might even come in and just give this a little spritz of water and see what happens. And when we give ourselves permission, it has a pointed and a flat edge, kind of like an, on an angle. Okay, very cool. Thank you guys. I'm here to learn. And I'm thinking that I can continue to sort of feel this swirling energy that part of the meditation is being in this space and energy of play. The other thing about this kind of watercolor play is it's out of my control. And I am definitely someone who loves to be in control of my life, feelings, emotions. And so playing in this way with watercolor reminds me I can't control what anyone else thinks of me, but I have complete control over my own emotions, my own choices. And don't ask me why, but I love this big, crazy abstract here. And so the affirmation on this one, grab a nice little micron here. I am deserving of love and respect just as I am. I can see propping this up in the bathroom where I see it every morning when I get up or get ready, you know, and I'm brushing my teeth before I go to bed, like putting these somewhere that I can really see and admire them and work with them. And I'm going to work very quickly this morning through all of these. We don't need to spend a ton of time on each one of these either. So I'm going to grab another one. Yes, it is, isn't it? Yeah, totally feels like a portal, which is uh, fun. Um, I'm my friend Leslie, who I'm co-leading a retreat here in my home studio, June 5th to 9th. That's called the Time Travelers Retreat. And she's coming for the next few days to work out our process and create some samples. And it's all about portals and doorways and through the looking glass. And so I think I'm already anticipating that idea of uh, portals. And if you're interested in finding out more about that retreat, you can see that on my website at MinetteRiordan.com. These are five by eight. They're pretty big. I had an eight by 10 sheet of paper of on and I just cut it in half. So I didn't want to waste paper. Five by four felt too small. So I just took what size paper I had and cut it in half. All right, so let's pick another affirmation here. I radiate confidence, grace, and inner beauty is really calling to me. Awesome, Susan. It's so funny. I was thinking about you. I was going to send you a personal email. Um, Tamara is coming as well. You remember Tamara from our retreat in Texas, and I wanted to reach out to some of the other retreat ladies as well, and you got to know both me and Leslie that weekend too. Um, but I also, I embrace my journey and appreciate the lessons it has taught me. I love that one. I am free to express my true self without fear of judgment. I'm going through these thinking, wow, I'd really love to create a card for pretty much every one of these. But I think I'm going to start with this feeling of I embrace my journey and appreciate <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Right back at you, my lovely friend. Um, and uh, this one about the journey feels very inspiring. I embrace my journey and appreciate the lessons. 
And I almost want to change this to the present moment of the lessons it has to teach me, because I see that life is a journey and I see where I'm going from from here. And there's so much still uh, to so many ways to grow and to learn. And so when I think about journeys, I'm thinking about green and I'm thinking about this idea of path. So again, I'm going to be just very loose and playful with this color. Lots of water, still playing with that really big brush. And those paths tend to cross. And I'm feeling really drawn to this just deep, deep sort of indigo blue over here. Letting those colors really just mix and play on the page. I'm looking for the energy, right? I'm looking for the energy here. I'm not looking for an exact illustration. And I love where, because I'm working on dry paper, that I get these really open places. And what feels fun about this one, now it kind of seems like, like when we did our soul scribbles the other day, like there's a almost like a whale critter kind of emerging in here. That wasn't my intention. But I can also come back and have a lot of fun with a black pen and add some marks and lines and patterns in here. And this also needs something maybe a little earthy, orangey. My cat is literally over there knocking my eraser. I can see three pens on the floor, a stack of paper. You think she's trying to get my attention or something. She's being very distracting this morning while I'm over here trying to like play and be in this lovely quiet space. George is like, not so much. So this one, again, that feels very complete. It feels done. It feels simple. I love the, the spread and the flow. I love just watching what the watercolor does on the page. And this one feels horizontal rather than vertical as well. Oh, yes, Bonnie. She was fed as soon as we got up. And she could care less about food. It's my big bruiser boy that is like feed me now about every hour. Um, he's the worst little beggar. And Georgia, she just wants to play. And so she's just bored. I think they're feeling the warm spring energy and she's feeling a little bored. So I'm going to come in and add I embrace my journey. And I'm going to have to go up and around, I think, to get it all in here. So we're just going to smoosh that in there and appreciate. It's a fun way to play with your own handwriting, too. Do you like your cursive? Um, <laughs> yes, that's Diego, Bonnie, totally. Uh, I embrace my journey and appreciate the lessons. And gifts. it has to give me. So I change that up a little bit. Play with your hand writing. Like, you know, do you love your cursive? Do you love your printing? This is a great way just to play. These are just for me. They're not for public consumption, right? And then once it's dry, again, this, you know, feeling of this is like a journey or a path. And, you know, there's always some pebbles and rocks in the path. So I'm going to come in, you know, maybe there's some dark spaces and some potholes and detours that we have to take. And then it starts to really take on this beautiful life just by adding those few little lines. Again, I'm loving the places where the color is flowing and mixing because, you know, the journey is never 
smooth. It's never completely even. There's always things that go wrong that get topsy-turvy. It's amazing how fast paint dries here. It always kind of boggles my mind how fast paint can dry. All right, so there's another one and I could spend the rest of the hour just uh, filling in and adding lines and line work to that one. So we will probably come back to that one. So here are our first two. I am deserving of love and respect just as I am. I embrace my journey and appreciate the lessons and gifts it has to give me. Completely different colors, so I'm not trying to stick with a palette. Again, I'm trying to create movement and color that for me is connected to the words and affirmations. And I really loved the one about, where's the one I'm about? I radiate confidence, grace, and inner beauty. I radiate this is rough on one side, smooth on the other. It's kind of fun paper. This is new to me paper that someone just gave me. I radiate confidence, grace, and inner beauty. And so this again is back to feeling very swirly. See how we do with our waters getting a little dirty there. So maybe I'm going to start with a little pop of orange. This is feeling a little almost kind of rainbow-like. And I'm going to maybe start in the center here, get my brush nice and clean. Awesome, Yvonne. And I think, you know, it's just such a good reminder to get those different supplies out and to play with them. So yellow to me is that color of radiating energy. This one's interesting. It's a little bit like that very first one, but the colors are different and I'm wanting to really kind of pull that color out a little bit more. And again, this is all of these are going to be fun to go back and add more lines and marks. And then what if I just came in here and I had some fun with the very lightly holding that tip of my brush. This reminds me of those, remember those little spinner things they used to have like a, a festivals where you put all the paint and a whole bunch of paint down and then you spin the, the paper around and it would create these really cool abstract drawings. I loved those as a kid. And so there's something about just playing with the paint here, allowing my hand to move and those colors to mix. I'm getting some of those beautiful little feathers up here of color. And I'm really playing with that energy of radiance, right? Playing with that energy of radiance. And you can see I haven't left uh, space. Spin art. Yes, so fun. Spin art and funnel cakes. Um, to, I haven't left white space on this one for writing. So I'm looking at it going, I'm pretty sure that affirmation, once this is completely dry, is going to get written in a circle around the edges. This is a great way to practice playing with watercolors to see what watercolor will do. And I don't have all the, the fun things down here, but there are so many fun techniques. Like I'm looking at this one going, I wish I had a, a piece of saran wrap. So when you crumple up saran wrap and you put it on top of watercolor and let it dry, you get the most um, amazing effects. And this one feels like one that would be really a fun 
experiment for this, but maybe I can just come in and dribble a little more water and we can get some of that texture going. Yes, funnel cakes. Yes, I love watercolor blooms, me too. And so now I've got some more blooms. Again, this feels like that energy of just, I am radiating, I am radiating confidence, grace, and inner beauty. And I could play all day. with color. All right, and set that one aside. The hardest part about this is you start to run out of room for uh, putting things down, right? Let's see. Let's look at the second page here, what I haven't already cut apart. A lot of these are kind of similar. I embrace the beauty of aging as a natural and valuable part of life. I embrace the beauty of aging as a natural and valuable part of life. All right, so the beauty of aging is our theme here. And I'm feeling pulled to some deeper, darker colors and maybe some watercolor play with circles, which is one of my favorite things to do with watercolor. So this one, I've got some clean water here because my other one is not so clean anymore. So it's important when you're playing with watercolor to have a lots of clean water available. And I've got that big flat brush and I'm going to make some watercolor circles on my page. You're not going to be able to see those circles. I can barely see the circles. I've got three big circles on here and now I'm going to come back and just start to drop some color in and being drawn to this deep violet. And this to me is where the magic happens. And it feels a little bit like these are almost like cells. So we, we think about aging, our body is aging, but also our cells are constantly renewing themselves. They're really, truly amazing things. Let me get some blues going on here. So I'm looking for depth and richness and movement. May want to add some more blooms here. Oh, that was black. Okay, well that was interesting. Uh, I thought it was going to be a dark purple. Let's come back over here to some of this beautiful magenta. And the cool thing about working wet on wet is the watercolor stays put. So wherever you have that wet circle or that wet line, it totally stays put. And you can move it around. And interesting, this looks very much like an eye where it could be the center of a flower. When I think about, you know, graceful aging, it's accepting the age spots and the wrinkles and the gray hairs, but it's also about doing what I can to maintain energy and flexibility and vitality. Like because I'm aging doesn't mean everything in my life is changing. In fact, some things I would say are better than others than they ever have been. I have no desire to go back to some previous time in my life. All right, so let's Use up some of that green there. It's interesting, the blue keeps disappearing into the, the center here. And this one is kind of fascinating. 
yeah, it's really fun. It's making me want to uh, do something different with this one, which is my least favorite. So I may redo that one um, and like chop that one up or zentangle all over it. It almost got too much paint. I like some of the, the simplicity and the white space of the others. All right, I'm going to drop a little bit of this. It may be getting too dry, but it feels like we need to balance some of this out a little bit here. And I'm dropping it kind of carefully in there. I don't really want to blend those colors because if I blend them, I'm just going to get brown because I'm mixing magenta and green. But somehow I got this amazing line of this really brilliant purple over here. And this one is going to be even more beautiful once it's dry. I love the way these dry. And I'm looking at this thinking it's a little bit out of balance because there are four shapes on the page and I feel like it needs one more circle on the, the page. And certainly as I get older, I don't know, balance is such a funny word. It's not necessarily about balance, but it's definitely about, we got a little tiny bit of turquoise in there, but it's definitely about making time for the things that matter would be for me a better definition of balance. And maybe I need some places to rest and slow down and I'm really wanting to bring some of this, these blues back in. Something about the blues feel a little bit like just depth. As we age, you know, we just naturally have a lot more depth, the depth of experience and being. All right, this one feels really quirky and fun, and I'm going to stop before I mess it up. I'm sorry I put all that blue on there, but one of the things that I love about watercolor is that I can just push that back. And even the tissue makes really beautiful patterns in the watercolor. And so that's kind of interesting as well. And then when this is dry, I'm going to come back in with something else and I'm just gonna scoop up a little bit of this sopping wet paint so that's gonna dry a little bit so always having a paper towel or a tissue nearby but yeah this one I'm loving sort of the the quirkiness of it it doesn't feel quite finished but it feels like I'm gonna set this one aside and I'm gonna come back to it and because what I want to do is redo the one about feeling radiant. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to think, okay, what do I want to be different? I still want the radiant, but it doesn't, it needs more white space on the, the page. So I'm going to start the same way that I started. Now I have lots of dirty water with that orange in the center. some yellow. You notice how everything is a little muddier, not quite as uh, vibrant as it was. That's because I have a bucket of purple water and a bucket of kind of dirty orangey brown water. Being a little more controlled here with this and so I'm going to see if I can loosen up just a little bit. All right, that already feels so much better, getting this gorgeous bloom happening over here. Lots of water here, a lot of dryness there. So just noticing, again, not, uh, not judging or needing it to be different. Okay, that one makes me a lot happier about radiating grace and ease and confidence or whatever the the specific words were and I have room to 
write the words on there. And I can play a little bit with that orange, pull that orange back to the center a bit. Just being patient and present and mindful here. And all of these change dramatically when they're dry, right? They will change dramatically when they're dry. So the, the colors will fade. There'll be interesting textures. Just play with texture a little bit here and maybe bring a little more of that vibrant. I'm feeling the yellow more than the orange. I'm going to come back and just brighten that up a little bit. Yeah, that feels better. So I still have some of the, the orange here, but just seeing what the color does and letting ourselves play. Oh, totally. Yvonne said this one made her think about a baby in the womb. I can completely see that, right? That's kind of the, the nature of the, the abstracts. And I could do a whole series of just these beautiful swirly circles that are each, even though they're the same similar process, they took on a different shape, they have a very different energy. And then the movement of this one rather than round, we have kind of that long path energy. I love this one as well. So I love the, the differences that um, they, they take on and how they shift and change as they dry. So one of my absolute favorite, let me put some of these on the floor to get nice and dry, way to play with watercolor is also to just play with mark making. So rather than letting it flow all over the page to be a little bit more precise with it. So I'm gonna have a gander. I think we'll do one more and be done for the day. And I will not be here tomorrow since my friend Leslie is here. So there will not be a live tomorrow. I am constantly evolving and open to the new opportunities life presents. I'm constantly evolving and open. So when I think about evolving and opening, what if we played with some maybe more staccato type marks? So maybe still some bloom, so smaller brush more controlled. I'm going to use a little bit drier brush. I actually tap that brush off. I'm going to come back to this vibrant purple. And I've got a little piece sticking out there. And then I'm just going to see what kind of shape can I create with this brush. So lots more pigment, not as much water. Can barely probably see on the screen that this is a very dark, dark violet. Always turning our page. Yeah, I'll have uh, lots of fun pictures to share and uh, super excited. We both really love deep work of all kinds. And so I can anticipate already all kinds of magic we're going to get up to this weekend. So I'm going to take a little bit different brush. This one has a little more pointier end. And I'm going to see... What kind of fun shape can I get just playing with my brush? And then this is that idea of evolving and staying open. Yet I also don't have complete control over the process. It's about experimentation and curiosity. understanding my supplies and what they're going to do. 
and I could pretty much paint watercolor flowers, you know, day after day after day. And then what else can I do with this brush? Things are evolving and moving and changing and opening. And I'm open to the experience. And part of that, again, is just enjoying our brush. So let's try and see what can we do with this big old flat brush here. And maybe we'll see what we can do with some of this. These violet colors were very strange in the tube. They had a completely, like the binder was very different. Not my favorite. But we'll see. The color's pretty, but the paint itself was a little wonky. And I was reading or watching something, oh, that's pretty, today about watercolor and about when you want to create a little more opacity with your watercolor to add white gouache to your watercolor to um, create a really subtle soft look. So I have no idea what I'm going to be able to do with this brush, but let's play and see. So I'm using the side, the flat side of the brush, and it creates a really lovely petal shape. So again, experimentation and play, letting go of needing it to look a certain way. What I'm noticing as I'm doing this is how much more I enjoy the big abstract flowy blooms. Like I like the way this looks, but there's that part of me that's like, mm. there's something about the just the release of playing. I just wanted these to actually be a little more round, so I'm getting a little fussy. I notice that. I start to feel some tension in my shoulders. And with this is this beautiful brush. It's not quite pointy on the end, but look at those lovely little dots. So again, I'm open to opportunities. Life is evolving and changing. I'm exploring and growing. I'm embracing play. And wondering what else can I do with this beautiful flat line here? Look at those radiant straight lines. Those are kind of magical. I don't know why that made me think of whiskers. I have a wolf painting on the wall over there behind me and it needs some work on its whiskers. His whiskers got too thick and I haven't had time to kind of play with it, but I'm thinking, oh, this brush would be perfect for whiskers. And then sometimes it gets a little fatter and goes a little bit different direction. Beautiful radiant bloom. So again, just leaning into possibility and delight. I'm constantly evolving and open to new opportunities. Evolving and open to new opportunities. And being open means accepting the invitation to play and experiment and explore. And to mix things together, I noticed I was sort of creating these kind of in these separate little spaces and also noticing that this brush makes a little wonkier shape. It's not as round as that first brush 
that I use there. And I love this quinacridone magenta in acrylic paint in watercolor. I dropped a little bit of water on there, so we'll see what happens. So a little bit different brush. Also that paint was a little bit drier, so it's going on a little bit different. And the way to stay open and evolving is to always invite in curiosity. Invite in curiosity. Curiosity can be our best friend on the journey of life, unlike our parents who love to tell us that curiosity killed the cat, hasn't killed my cats yet. And for me, this is all about play, right? This is all about play. And I love the simplicity of this. And I'm definitely feeling like it needs some little pops of green leaves. And I want to leave space open for writing on it. But I really love the energy of this. feels very expansive. And... I'm going to grab an even smaller brush and come back to this pretty, it's like a green gold. I'm not sure what the color green is, but I love it. Again, not a lot of water, it gives me a little more control. Maybe I want a little less control and I want to see if I just let that green do its thing, what might be possible. So just looking for those little open spaces where I can just pop a little bit of that growth. When I think of things that are evolving, I think of growth and expansion and movement. This brush has a lovely, lovely, very sharp point at the end. So I can get that nice sharp leaf shape on there. And I think where I was going with this one was maybe there's going to be a whole little branch of these and then I can connect those all together. Again, just that little bit of a symbol of growth on there. I'm like, okay, that was fun. I think I need another one of those. So again, just following intu intuition. Not wanting to stop playing, which means I'm filling up all my white space here. So I will just write that affirmation right over the, the top. feels like it just needs a little, like some balance in there because I put just that one green leaf. So it needs a few more of those leaves in there. Again, just trusting the play. All right, I need to stop there. The, let's see. I embrace the beauty of aging as a natural and valuable part of my life. I embrace the beauty of aging as a natural and valuable part of my life. And this one is, I am constantly evolving and open to the new opportunities life presents. And that's how this one feels to me. And 
if I were creating a deck, it also feels very different. So it was very fun to paint, but it doesn't necessarily feel like it matches. And what I'm kind of feeling inspired to do when I have some more time is to do a series of these flowy ones because these felt the most like the affirmations to me, right? These felt the most like the, the affirmations to me. So I really loved how these came out and I want to go in and do a little more work on each of them with the, with the black pen. So here's where this one is at as it's uh, drying up. So I'm going to come back in with just a little bit more color. I don't know why it just feels like it needs that dark blue on there, but without all the marks. So this will be a fun one to come in maybe with a white Posca or a white gel pen and add color to. But what I'm feeling right now is that I want to do one more. I have two more pieces of paper and I just got blue on that one, blue on that one. But I want, uh, like I love the, the pinks and the greens and the reds and the yellows. And I want one that's blue. Like I'm all of a sudden feeling before I'm done, I'm not going to worry about the affirmation. I'm going to paint first and then I'm going to add the affirmation. So let me take a, a backwards approach to this, but I'm feeling so drawn to this and I'm trying to decide if it's another path one. So I'm just following that, that intuition of where it wants to go. Well, I think it's important to remind ourselves to just trust the flow, right? And to not get caught up in, well, I'm doing this. No, I'm doing that. You know, to really just be in the energy of what moves me, what moves me. Those blues are so different from each other. And I'm just feeling very drawn to this very dark, grungy blue. Most of these watercolors that are in here are either Windsor Newton or um, Daniel Smith watercolors. So I'm putting dip that with that color in the water. Again, just trusting what wants to come up in the moment. Following the flow of the brush where it leads. This one also feels like a path and an opening. Lots of pigment on this one. Again, just really mopping that around, letting it pool so that when it dries, it's going to have these beautiful, beautiful pools of color. And this one definitely has that, that energy of a, a path and movement along. And I could spend hours being lost in just page after page of this abstract play. So I'm going to do one more because I have one more piece of paper. So why not? Because then I got to go get to work for a couple of hours before I go drive to the airport. And I'm wanting these earthy tones. So the I started where I started was in that light, bright place of lots of energy. And where I'm wanting to be now is just in this more earthy, what happens when we bring in a whole different palette? How does it change the energy of the movement and the swirls? Let me 
maybe just a, a little pop of this vibrant purple. I love purple and green together. Sort of spiraling in. This one, this one made you think of a geode, or this one made you think of a geode. They both kind of have that energy, don't they? But again, just to allow ourselves the opportunity to play. This one, all of a sudden, it has that feeling of the sands of time, a little bit of hourglass energy, letting those colors mix and mingle. And then letting them sit for a while and then going back to them and say, which of the affirmations matches the energy? So two different approaches. You could paint and then find the words or a line of poetry, or you can start with the words and paint the energy of the words. And I think allowing ourselves to just try it in a variety of different ways. And again, I love the collection of energy that's been expressed here, right? Like there's just this sense of having been on a journey already today through these different colors, right? And there's some transitions between them and some differences and some similarities but mostly it was just a heck of a ton of fun. So I hope you had as much fun as I did playing with color and movement and that you feel inspired to go get your watercolors out today and to create something that feels magical to you. And I will see you all on Monday for Make Monday's Morning Sacred. And I uh, hope you have a beautiful rest of your day, a beautiful weekend. It's going to be in the 60s here. I'm so excited. And uh, I'm going to go enjoy some sunshine. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Thanks, as always, for joining me live. Thanks for catching the replay. Delighted to be here with you uh, live. And if you're catching the, the replay, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll see you guys all soon. Bye-bye.